Hello, so what we're going to do is now that we've learned how to take the derivative of an e, we are going to learn to integrate the e. So since um, our e's derivatives were itself, the derivative of e to the x is equal to e to the x, the integral of e to the x must also be e to the x. So this is noted right here. Now the key thing that you have to take note of is that this power has to be an x. So the first problem, we can actually combine our constant multiple rule and this e to the x rule. And if I pull out that 6, I get e to the x dx, which we see is actually e to the x plus c. So I end up getting 6 e to the x plus c. Now if you take a look at this next problem, the difference is our power is actually different. It's not an x, but it's an x squared. So what we're going to end up doing is our u will always be our exponent. And then we'll do u substitution to see if this works out. So in this case, u is equal to x squared. du is equal to 2x dx. And if we line this up, I have the x squared right here. I have the x dx right here and right here. So that means I need to pull out this constant multiple of 3. I need to pull out this 2 as a reciprocal. And then I can integrate the e to the u du. And since we know that e to the u du is e to the u, I end up getting 3 halves e to the u plus c. And then our last step is to plug back in our u. So we get 3 halves e to the x squared plus c. So let me box all these answers. Now if you take a look at this next problem here, I have two differences. Uh, my exponent is different again, and second I have actual limits. So let's do this in red. My u is equal to x squared minus 1, which means my du is equal to 2x dx. If I line this up, I have the power. I've got the x dx. I do have to pull out this 2, so I end up getting 1 half the integral e to the u du. Since I have limits, I have to change my u's. So u2 is equal to 2 squared minus 1 is 4 minus 1, which is 3. u1 is equal to 1 squared minus 1 is 0. So my new limits are 0 and 3. And then if I solve this, I end up getting 1 half e to the u, 3 and 0. No, no need for that c anymore. Since I changed the limits, I can just plug this in and I get 1 half e to the third minus 1 half e to the 0. And if we simplify this, e to the 0 is 1, so I actually don't need that. And I can combine my denominators now that I just have a 2 as my denominator for each of these, and I get e to the third minus 1 over 2. So the strategy is actually u substitution when I'm taking the integral of an e power. Now, let's take a look at how we are supposed to um, take the derivative of ln. Now, the key thing is when we drew the picture of ln, I showed you that we can't cross the y-axis. This entire time, our x, our domain, x has to be greater than 0. I can't go anywhere less than 0 or else it's undefined. Now, if you see that whatever is after the u is an absolute value, that actually changes your domain. Because the difference is now I get rid of the sign problem. The only time it becomes undefined is at 0. So the domain for this is actually negative infinity to 0, not at 0, which means in union with 0 to positive infinity. So let's go ahead and take a look at both of these derivatives. And what I see is I do 
a U substitution, but on the bottom, I end up using a U. On the top, in the numerator is where I put the derivative of the U. So I'm going to set my U to be whatever is after ln. In this case, U is x cubed. And I'm not integrating, I'm just taking the derivative. So the derivative of this is 3x squared. Let me just shift this over slightly. So for this problem right here, we see that dy dx is equal to du, so 3x squared, over u, which is x cubed. And if I simplify this, this x squared cancels 2 over here, which then gives me 3 over x. Let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. So not only do I have an ln, but I have a set of parentheses outside of ln, which means I need to use a chain rule. So this then gives me f prime of x is equal to, let me make my pen a little bit thinner, is equal to 15 times the stuff, so ln of x to the second, times the derivative of ln of x. Well, the derivative of x is 1, so I multiply the top by 1. Then I put a denominator of u, which is x, which then, if I rewrite this, gives me 15 parentheses ln of x squared over x. Good. Okay, so let me shift some of this over so I have more room. So actually, let's shift this this way. I see over here, I have a absolute value, which means I can actually use this anytime whatever is after ln is not equal to zero. So what I see is my u has to equal sine of e to the x which means my du is a derivative of the word, which is cosine, times the stuff, e to the x, times the derivative of the stuff, which is e to the x. So if I were to uh, use the formula, my du is e to the x, cosine e to the x, and my u was sine e to the x. And if I wanted to simplify this, I know that the um, formula for cosine over sine, as long as what's in parentheses is the same, is actually e to the x cotangent of e to the x. Perfect. So just keep in mind, uh, u is what's after ln. I find du, and then du becomes numerator, and the u becomes a denominator. So let's take a look at another set of problems. Right here, I take a look and I notice I have x's in two places. The first x is in e3 to the x. The second x is over here. So if I need a derivative, what rule would you end up using? Good, the product rule. So what we get is f prime of x is equal to the first term, so e to the 3x times the derivative of the second. So let's color code this. For this part, I get u is equal to cosine of x. Cosine of x, which means du has to be negative sine of x. So that derivative is negative sine of x over cosine of x plus the second term, which is ln cosine of x, times the derivative of that first term. So the derivative of the first term is e to the u, which is e to the 3x, times the derivative of the power, which is 3. So if I clean this up, I end up getting e to the 3x, and that's a negative. Sine over cosine is the same as tangent of x. Plus, in here I'm going to move the 3e to the 3x in front, ln 
cosine of x. Good. Let's take a look at the next problem. This is just an ln, so what I do is I set everything after the ln as my u. u is equal to x squared plus e to the 5x. I find my du, which is 2x plus e to the 5x times the derivative of 5x, which is 5. So if I set this up, I get dy dx is equal to du 2x plus 5e to the 5x over u, which is x squared plus e to the 5x. And there's your answer. So let's take this one step further and let's do one tangent line problem and one implicit differentiation problem. So here it says write the equation of a tangent line to the function of a graph given the following x value. So tangent line problems you automatically know is y minus y1 is equal to f prime of x times x minus x1. I have my x1 but I need to find my y. So I plug it in and I get f of 1 is equal to 1 squared plus ln of 1 over e to the 3 times 1, which is 3. This gives me 1 plus 0 because ln of, zero is zero, uh, ln of 1 is 0, e to the 3rd, which then gives me 1 over e to the 3rd. So I can actually plug in my y value. We know this number is going to go in here. We also know that this number is going to go in here. So all I need is a derivative. So according to this, I need to use the quotient rule, right? So I'm going to use a quotient rule, and then we'll clean it up just a little bit. We get f prime of x is equal to the bottom times the derivative of the top which is 2x plus, I use du over u, which is dx, which is 1, over x, minus the top, x squared plus ln of x, times the derivative of the bottom, which is e to the 3x, times 3, all over the bottom squared, so we get e to the 3x, if I square that, I just multiply the power by 2, which gives me e to the 6x. So what we're going to do is, since I need to plug in 1, I'm going to plug in 1 right away so it helps me with the work. So f prime of 1 is equal to e, 3 times 1 is 3, times 2 plus 1, minus 1 squared is 1 plus ln of 1 is 0, parentheses times 3, e to the 3, all over e to the 6. And if I continue this, we see that I get 3 e to the 3rd. Over here, I get minus 3 e to the 3rd over e to the 6. I, my numerators become 0, so my slope is actually 0. So I plug in 0 into here. And if I were to do all of this in one step, I end up getting y minus 1 over e to the third is equal to 0 times x minus 1. This entire thing cancels, and I end up getting y is equal to 1 over e to the third. Good. So let's do an implicit differentiation problem. We haven't done one of those in a while. Just as a reminder, this is when I need to find dx. So I end up just taking the derivative like normal. Every time I see a y, I need to take the derivative of y as dy dx. So if we do this, the first one is a normal derivative, and I get 8x plus in this case, I have a product rule. So the first term, the derivative of ln of y is 1 over y. And then I need to put the dy dx. Plus the second term, 
ln of y, the derivative of x is 1, plus the derivative of e to the 2y is e to the 2y times 2, since that's a y, it's dy dx. And we're going to need more room for this, so let me uh, make this smaller. If you notice on the second side, I have um, a trig function, but I also see that I have a co I have to use our trig derivatives. So here, the derivative of four is zero. Derivative of trig is the derivative of the word, which is negative sign of the stuff, which is x y times the derivative of the stuff, the derivative of the stuff is actually the product rule again. So I get the first term, x, times the derivative of the second, dy dx, plus the second, which is y, times the derivative of the first, like that. So I collect all my dy dx's on one side, and then I move everything else on the other side. So I'm going to clean this up as we do this. Over here, I see I have x over y dy dx plus 2e to the 2y dy dx. Over here, dy dx is here, so I'm going to distribute the, this, and then I'm going to move that over, which means instead of a negative, this becomes plus. I'm going to move that x to the front, which gives me x sine of x, y, dy, dx. Once again, I'm going to make this smaller right here, just so we have more room. All right. And then I continue this off. I get equals. I move that 8x to become a negative 8x. I move this plus ln y to become a minus ln y. And here I had distributed to get a minus y sine of x, y. On the right hand side I need to factor out a dy dx. So dy dx is equal, uh, pull that out and I get x over y plus 2e to the 2y plus x sine of x, y is equal to everything on the left hand side which is negative 8x minus ln of y minus y sine of x, y and then to get dy by itself I need to divide by this whole thing so x over y plus 2e to the 2y plus x sine of x, y uh, and I'm going to be lazy here, so let's go ahead and copy this. I'm going to paste it and move it down here. Because I'm too lazy. And then what we end up seeing is this entire side cancels this. And we end up getting, let's use the highlighter dy dx is equal to this entire function right here. So what you've actually done in this lesson is we've reviewed u substitution, we've learned how to take derivatives and integrals of e's in the lens, and we've actually practiced implicit differentiation. So all at once we've been able to start reviewing for, oh and we did tangent line, so this actually helps us really review for our um, AP exam. All right. Good luck, and uh, let's try a couple of these problems in class when you return. Goodbye.